AMD hits their best ever. Apple pulls down an ad and, oh man, these new APUs are gonna be 4070 class? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, May 13th, 2023. We're gonna start off today talking about a report that I discussed a little bit last week, but I didn't have the contextual data to see just how massive of an achievement this was for AMD. And that is the latest Q1 2024 market share reports about how AMD is doing in the CPU side of things. And according to the details for companies that have been keeping track of records much longer than I can even possibly see, and it turns out that this is the best AMD's ever done. This is the highest market share that they've had in CPU for quite some time. And this is before all of the reported issues that have been going on with Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPU. So they are in an incredible position to continue to increase this CPU market share. Again, as potentially new stuff's coming out from them at Computex. And additionally, we're still waiting for the full resolution of what's going on with Intel's i9 chips. This appears to be a momentous occasion for them. It's very exciting to see where the CPU market is right now. I remember getting my hands on a Ryzen 7 1700X review sample. It's one, like one of the very early videos here on the UFD Tech channel. And that's that's the inflection point, at least mentally for me. And kind of, you can see it in the charts as well. AMD started putting out things that made a lot of sense for consumers. Eight cores, 16 threads, direct to you in case you wanted them. Whereas Intel was still putting out the i7 7700K, which only had four cores and eight threads. It was, it was a marked shift and it's been up and down since then. I mean, you'd see that there's certain points that Intel has managed to bounce back in between, even though they were continuously releasing 14 nanometer chips. They haven't just let AMD run away with it, but now they might be forced to at least seat a little bit more ground before they get things back on track, or if they ever do. And I know one of the things that people are wanting to get back on track is uh, GPU power, but since that's not likely to happen, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video with their all new Gila 2050R Platinum, which is an ATX 3.0 update to the most powerful PC power supply for sale for the past two plus years, which was the Gila 2050 Platinum, which was released in November, 2021 and thoroughly tested and confirmed to be the strongest PSU money can buy by tech power ups then PSU editor, who happens to also be the creator of the cybernetics program and owner of Hardware Buster's review site. This new update brings with it the customary ATX 3.0 requirements, such as the 12 volt high power cables, two native and one full length adapter included, greater peak power excursion tolerance, and faster sleep slash wake response. And as is the case with most Silverstone power supplies, this one was designed to be as compact as possible at only 180 millimeters deep, typically 1500 watt plus power supplies are 220 mils or longer. So you can fit it in almost any ATX or micro ATX case. Needless to say, if you need the strongest PSU that money can buy, continue to look Silverstone's way because they've got a great update for you. Well, in case you're one of the countries that can actually use the full capabilities of a 220 volt power supply, you might want to pay attention to this next story in case you wanted to play Ghost to Tsushima because reports are coming out that they are delisting in nearly 200 countries the ability to play this game on Steam and other platforms. This is because of the PlayStation Network login requirement. Yes, the very same problem that caused caused the fecal defecation storm of Helldivers 2 last week that caused Sony to say, hey, we're not gonna do that anymore. They are bringing it to Ghost of Tsushima. Still, they never said that they were pulling it away from there. But this is coming after pre-orders were allowed for all of these countries that don't have access to PlayStation Network. And the reason Sony is doing it is because PSN is required to log into multiplayer. However, there's still a very expansive, I mean, the whole point of the game really is to play that single player for most people. So to remove the ability to play a single player game because this multiplayer campaign that very many people don't want to actually play, uh, it, it, you can't access it instead of allowing people to not access that and still play the game on PC. Sony has determined that the data that they would get from you logging into PSN is more valuable than the money that I guess that they're going to get. So pre-orders were put in. Thankfully, Steam, Green Man Gaming, and a whole host of other places where you could buy it are starting to issue refunds for this. So it's not necessarily as 
bad as Hell Divers, where uh, people were playing it for months and then had the rug pulled out from under them. People are not even going to be able to play this game on PC, and uh, they're having to deal with Sony uh, beforehand, which hopefully teaches you a lesson of however you want to interpret their actions moving forward. If they're a publisher that you want to continue to support, which is really bummer news for anybody who's a fan of the God of War franchise, because reports are coming out that God of War Ragnarok is supposed to be announced for PC on PlayStation sometime soon. This does not have a multiplayer mode, so hopefully won't have a, a login requirement, but who's to say Sony won't change that at all? Because one of the things that happened with Ghost of Tsushima was they announced that they're going to start bringing over cross-platform trophies, and that would require you to log in. It's just, a, it's just nonsense that they are forcing it to be a requirement instead of allowing it to be an optional thing that you can do, and you still get to enjoy the game, even if you don't want to give them your data. We'll see if they learn any lessons from this. It seems like whatever lessons they learn from the Helldivers incident weren't actual lessons that the community was trying to teach them of like, hey, don't impose arbitrary restrictions on the gaming community here on PC because we don't abide those. And instead, Sony heard, uh, uh, don't, don't do it to Helldivers because they get angry. Helldivers gamers are angry people. We'll just, we'll piss off everybody else and hopefully it'll be okay. Which is also a little bit of the firestorm that Apple found themselves in with the iPad Pro ad that they released. I'll just play this for you while I'm talking about it. But Apple ended up saying that this ad that I'm showing to you right now was kind of in bad taste and that they missed the mark on it. A lot of people viscerally responding to this ad simply because of all the destruction and all the visceral emotions emotion that it's trying to communicate as you squeeze down all the things that represent human creativity and artistic expression and even videography and music, you are crushing that down into a single piece of consumer capital, which is the new iPad Pro that has an OLED display that's capable of doing a whole lot. The main narrative that people came out and said that they were upset with is just this feels very tone deaf, especially in the age of generative AI and people having their artistry being stripped from them and fed through these models and then just being able to be copy pasted ad nauseum this kind of felt in that vein whereas there's also people on the other side who are saying this is just a brilliant ad what are you talking about like it's supposed to evoke emotion it, it's communicating the right message all the things that represent the totality of human creativity and boundless imagination is being shrunk down into a seamless device that you can now use to express yourself and it, it was a fiery passionate debate either way across people with Apple ending up seeding that they think that they did miss the mark and so they're not going to be airing that one on TV they have left it up on YouTube in case you want to go check it out I personally I'm not bothered by the ad. Like, I think it was a little intense. I think almost graphic in its violence, right? Not gory, not having anything to do with like human violence, but it felt like a very violent representation, which I, I think for the, the tone of artistry was maybe lost because of that. But I, I don't, I personally didn't feel any problems with it, but I know that many other people who are uh, more creative, more imaginative, and uh, more in touch with their artistic side than I am uh, did not feel that way. So I, I concede that uh, maybe I don't see it because I am a very non-creative individual, especially with the those types of arts. But you know who is? Reese. He's got a guitar on his wall. I don't know if you can see it when he does deals, but he also got a cricket machine in the back. Everybody commenting about Reese's cricket machine. So it feels self-conscious about it and uh, doesn't know why everybody's saying about it because he doesn't watch hockey, so he won't know why I, why everybody's talking about it. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, why not start your week off with some fresh deals? Because first up, we have this Fractal Design Pop Air ATX Metal case available in black for only $59.99, making it $20 off. And then next up, if you like RGB, we have the Corsair QL120s, which are 120mm RGB fans available in a triple pack for only $79.99 with the coupon applied, making it $60 off. And then lastly, we have this ASRock B650 PG Lightning AM5 motherboard for only $149.99, making it $50 off. And hey, them's the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like OpenAI thinks that their AI is a deal that's good enough to release into the world of search engines. And they're announcing that allegedly today, according to many reports, the OpenAI 
search engine should be revealed today, a day before the Google I.O. event, which will be tomorrow, where Google's supposed to show off how they're integrating AI into all of their products and how it's gonna make everything better on that front. This is just a cheeky little move by OpenAI to potentially get ahead of the curve and get ahead of the announcements on what Google has. I mean, the last time Google had to try to rush to show off something to compete with OpenAI, they uh, had misinformation in there because their AI hallucinated. But I'm curious just to hear the uh, general community sentiment are you using OpenAI as much as you were, let's say a year ago or even six months ago? Would you switch your default search engine to something like OpenAI or would you just hope that a company like Google starts implementing all of the natural language querying that you see on something like OpenAI? Or are you just hoping that they bring back Ask Jeeves because that it just all feels like the same thing at this point, right? Well, it looks like NVIDIA wants to bring back the Linux community because they're announcing that they are going to have OpenGPU kernel as the default for their drivers starting with R560. This appears to be a big move with them setting the open Linux kernel modules are in being installed by default. This is not an area that I'm super strong in. I don't necessarily have a horse in the leg of the race of uh, what should be going on with Linux and AMD and NVIDIA drivers in terms of open source and closed source, but is this a big deal to you Linux people? Let me know down below in the comments. Well, I'll let you know what is a big deal to me, and that is an update that's coming to my favorite type of Linux gaming, the Steam Deck, because the newest update, which is being called Remote Controlled, also known as the preview update of SteamOS 3.6, has quite a few important patches to it. Number one, the BIOS for the Steam Deck LCD will now have overclocking controls. You can make it so that your SD card is now your boot device. Compatibility is improved for Bluetooth audio drivers and as well as a few fixes for Bluetooth. But a big one is that there's FPS improvements on this update because the graphics drivers have been updated to Mesa 24.1, which according to Valve should come with lots of performance and accuracy improvements. And based on some preliminary testing that I've seen from other YouTubers who have been able to get this preview installed and test out a few games, it's to the tune of, uh, 0% in, in some games, this doesn't really matter at all to, I've seen it's improved games by 20, maybe even 30% in isolated incidences. So this appears to be a pretty big update. It's currently in the preview, so you have to be on the beta testing setup on your Steam Deck in order to do it. But in case you want a game on Linux, the best way that there is, 3.6 appears to be a good big deal. And what appears to be an even bigger deal than I thought it was going to be is the upcoming Strix Halo APUs that AMD is going to be releasing because there's new reports showing off testing of new models of Strix Halo that were not conceived of before, including one with a 40 compute unit chip, while also having 16 Zen 5 CPU cores and having 50 tops of AI performance and having up to 64 gigabytes of 8,533 megatransfers memory. So this is a big big chip. And the big deal here as well is that it's at 120 watt TDP. If you look at a lot of the other APUs that AMD has released, this have only been around the 65 watt mark. So they're almost doubling it to get it to 120 and they're stuffing it full of GPU cores, 40 RDNA three and a half cores, which is a little less than we're expecting to get from the PS5 Pro. That one's supposed to be in the 60 compute unit region, but 120 watt improvement on this chip could make it a very, very powerful GPU. CPU, CPU combo, you're getting basically an incredible bang for your buck in a singular chip with, at least over here on the video card speculation list, they're equivalating the top flagship Strix Halo chip to being in the RTX 4070 class, whereas the lower end version with 32 compute units would be 4060 class, and the one with 24 compute units would be the 4050 class. I think that's probably a little ambitious, especially because you can't take how things perform in an an ideal scenario and then say 40 compute units is actually going to work out like this, especially because uh, these APUs tend to be very memory starved. We don't know where the power distribution lies. So a 16 core CPU trying to also compete with resources for a 40 compute unit GPU, that could be a very still power starved setup, especially when you look at the PS5, which is pulling 200 watts and has 36 compute units and it has eight CPU cores. That is a dynamic that allows it to perform okay, but if we're bringing it over to a single socket thing that does 120 watts, I, I'm curious to see how this plays out. I'm very excited for this. This is a this is a new switcheroo in the 
upcoming Strix Point APUs that are supposed to be released. Likely this is gonna be uh, mobile first, but then could potentially make its way over to desktop where we could even see that it has 16 lanes of PCI Express Gen 4 support, which means that you're getting a CPU that can handle actually having a full class graphics card slotted in as well. So much about Strix Halo continues to excite me, continues to impress me. I'm looking forward to the day that AMD actually shows these off. I don't know if we're gonna get a Computex reveal for this 40 compute unit one. Maybe they might tease it. They might do the thing that AMD loves to do, which is live stream in their own feed of it playing games, not, not where they are. So it's a remote gameplay that they're streaming in, which then they stream out to us and they say, wow, look at how good that looks when it's been compressed multiple times and you can't tell if the frame stutters from your internet or if it's actually happening in the game. I love it when AMD does that. That's a staple of AMD Computex coverage. It's it's the best thing ever. I'm not being facetious in the slightest, but I honestly, I gotta be honest here. I would prefer that to them talking about AI the whole time. I would rather look at Liza P being streamed by somebody who's playing on a Vega Radeon 7 card that we can't see. I'd rather have that than them talking about how AI is gonna make our lives better and that it's it's good for all of us. And what's good for me is to read the comments of everything you guys talk about. So let's check that out from this weekend's video, which was Kyler checking out the GTX 970 here in the year 2024, roughly 10 years later over why I say it like that? Over on Floatplane, Mark Spark saying, I told my dad you said hi. He said who? It's a great comment. You should watch the video to find out exactly why uh, people's dads are talking to Kyler. And we got Mario over on YouTube saying, ah, yes, the three and a half gigabyte card. That was a little bit of lore I had to drop on Kyler. He wasn't aware of the whole VRAM debacle that happened a decade ago because he was still in high school when it happened and did not have the money for that GPU. He also struggled a little bit with VR gaming in that video. And my hypothesis is that it ran out of the high speed VRAM very quickly, especially because VR takes a lot more RAM because it's rendering more textures at a higher resolution. So I think that's probably a good reason why it struggled. The Nismo saying, I still finally remember going to Best Buy and picking up a 970. This was before the days of GPUs locked in cases. Then Demonic Slayer saying, I had a GTX 970 until last week when it finally failed. It had served me eight to nine years while it wasn't able to play any newer games at high FPS. It still gave me great value and good gaming performance at medium settings for quite a lot of games. That's exactly why we wanted to cover it and why we wanted to check it out. And I think that's the main theme of those videos that Kyler's been doing with older GPUs is like, hey, there are people who are still in this situation or might find themselves that that's the best they can do buying a 30 or 40 dollar used gpu on ebay and the 970 is still mildly capable then bc saying i never saw this host on this channel before but i really like him and then you my boy blue saying kyler is a gem he's on the twitch stream monday through friday he's a good host and a great guy he'll be, he'll be in more videos moving forward and then on friday's episode of hot news over on flow plane we got crypto Knight saying rip north americans we're going to need to install dedicated 20 amp circuit breakers just for our computers We're potentially going past 110, 120 volt for our, for our entire setup. That that might be something we have to do. The Northern Llama saying, this botched ROG ally announcement makes me miss the days when companies would build hype by sending their faithful fanboys on scavenger hunts to solve elaborate puzzles, crack codes, find hidden messages, and decrypt secret URLs. The Matrix Halo portal. I would have loved to have that over what Asus did with the RG Ally X announcement, which is supposed to be happening in Computex. Just get, get us something to decode that it's announcement happening on the second. That would have been so much better than a 10 minute live stream complete with technical issues and it was delayed by an hour. That just, I don't think that put your company and a good look for anybody. And then over on YouTube on Friday's episode, we had Shadow Lemon saying, if a RTX 5090 like that will be released, it would melt like Chernobyl. Yeah, but then you could say that your GPU is liquid cooled because it, it liquefied. It's a, it's a good joke. Oh my gosh, saying, I will believe Apple M4 claims after all the YouTube reviewers get their hands on it and do a real life benchmark, not Apple's cherry pick benchmarks, to which the first response from Andy is the Geekbench scores are and such are not at all picked out by Apple. They may potentially be scores that are being submitted by Apple employees, but they're under strict NDAs. If they're doing that, they're jeopardizing their jobs. I'm not saying that it's impossible for them to submit Geekbench scores, but uh, because it's the place where they work, they actually likely won't be doing that. I don't necessarily think they're seeding those scores themselves. I think that is 
third party media who got their hands on it and submitted scores that they weren't supposed to. Oopsie doopsie, Apple tracked them down to make sure they never get anything else in their entire lives. But most important thing about this comment, we've got Nicholas saying Apple cherry picking to It's Me Charisma saying Apple is Apple picking. Apple, I think that's hilarious. Thank you for clarifying that. Anthony Soprano saying, I like that you said while you enjoy your breakfast, makes this channel feel like home. Use more references like that. Then Nicholas coming in again saying, it's actually breakfast, he says. To which Mr. Tony Soprano himself says, Lamau. It's breakfast, because I'm I'm your Brett host. So yeah, you're supposed to feel at home here. We'll have you covered for tech news Monday through Friday. And in case there's things you want me covering that maybe I'm not, let me know down below in the comments or over on our Discord. Either way, we're here to keep you up to date with the hottest tech news out on the internet, which will happen again tomorrow. I'll see you there. Goodbye. Why am I talking like Tony the Tiger?